What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp Fightful here with a name you know. You know her because we've, we've been able to interview her multiple times. It's so funny. I, I, I think you're the first person I ever saw in three different time zones when I actually started to travel. And we've not seen each other since, since. the pandemic. Isn't that wild? We got Alicia oh, Atute here, one of the hottest Hi. free agents out there. A brand new free agent, Alicia. It has been less than 24 hours, Sean, and now we are here. So thank you for having me on. Excited to talk about all of this and uh, kind of get into everything that went down. So I, the first thing I'll ask is, what what's going on? What happened? Like what was <sighs> what? I know a year ago you had re-signed with MLW. Yeah. That announcement came out, but uh, what led to this? Yeah, the whole the whole thing was a little bittersweet to be fully forward with you. Back in August, I did my last uh, appearance with MLW, but left that show not thinking it would be. Of course, we received the news that my partner Richard Holiday was very very sick, and he had to step away for quite some time. So they were kind of jumbled in the back, trying to figure out the next steps for me. Do they put me back in the interviewer position? Do they just throw me with someone else? But maybe it doesn't make sense. So um, months went by and. Then more months went by and it kind of started to hit where I wasn't doing television appearances with them or anything like that. So I think we both came to the decision where rather than just make me wait, which I wasn't very comfortable with because there's a lot more going on just outside of the wrestling world for me too right now um it was very amicable and we decided you know for now let's let's part ways they granted me my release which was just lovely there was no bs nothing to kind of go back and forth with and now i'm i'm a free agent which is awesome it's it's very cool because for me the whole reason that i wanted to sign with a company was to simply be at shows do my work and show people what i have to offer and unfortunately we're coming up on what would have been a couple months away from from a full year of not being able to do that with the company I was signed with and again the, the circumstances and situation suck because clout couple was one of my favorite things I got to do in my career um, but it just sometimes you have to make business decisions over personal ones and so that's where this kind of came into play I mean interviewing you all was one of my favorite things I've got to do in <laughs> in wrestling that was the most fun interview that that I've ever had uh, uh, I, I'll retweet it every so often but Obviously, that that's something nobody could have predicted. That what happened with Richard and of course um, not. And the the composure that he has maintained throughout all this has been just very inspiring and, and remarkable. Uh, how how far into this do you figure out that's what's going on? Because I know for a while he didn't even know that's what was going on. Yeah, so that entire situation was a lot. We were we were at that show in the summertime and during his match against Hammer, he just went black for like 10-15 seconds in the ring. Ends up finishing the match out, which most troopers will, so like kudos to him because I know I'd be like, get me to the back right now, something's going on. And at first they just thought it was a couple of issues that weren't as intense once they got him checked out and then of course within the next month we find out that it's not just these smaller issues it's actually cancer and he immediately had to take a step back of course and just focus on himself so it, it was so unexpected i remember the night it happened at mlw just being by his side for four hours literally in the back while he was laying down making sure he was drinking and not like passing out and it was it was so scary and so intense and I'm just very happy to see that he's in a much better place now. I've been keeping, obviously, uh, very much in touch with him to make sure everything's good. And yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm happy to see that there will be a return for him sooner than we had ever anticipated. And he's much healthier. And that, that's all we want coming out of this. You know, that's that's the main thing. Um, but he's doing well. Yeah. And speaking with Hammerstone, he seems to think that it'll be sooner than later. And I've spoken with Richard a few times as well. Just a ton of respect for that guy. And the, he was wrestling with that. For the love of God, like the guy was wrestling with that. But w I did mention uh, just under a year ago, you had announced you had resigned with MLW. How much longer yes. did did you have on your your current deal? Uh, so it would have been up this December. Okay. So yeah, so the whole thing also was kind of thinking, even if he is to make that return, let's say the summertime or even yeah. in the fall, that only leaves a couple more months for me with the brand. That's if I was to re-sign again. And there were just a lot of different things to think about. So once that all kind of simmered down and we realized, sure. okay, one, he's going to be okay, but we also have to wait and again it came down to business i i want to be somewhere where i can continue to thrive and have that tv time and show what i'm made of and i've been working so hard on just practicing so many different things other than interviewing and so yeah. i think it'll be cool just to see where where that goes and where i can bring that to 
So how has that been for you? Because, you know, for so long you were known as the interview queen and still are, still are. But Thank I you. mean, like you, Thank you're, you. you're doing so many different things now and you've always been very versatile with who you interview and, and what you're involved in, especially music, wrestling and, and sort of the marriage between those two. Yeah, so lately it's been a lot of different stuff. I've kind of just been in this weird zone where I'm letting the universe just throw things in my lap and whatever's sticking I'm, I'm enjoying. And it's, it's been working out, so I'm just going to keep with it. Um, but Knotfest came into my life throughout the pandemic, Slipknot's brand and music festival and media company. And so I've been hosting a ton for them, um, going out to live shows, festivals sooner on the horizon. So lots of really just huge metal interviews. I host some podcasts for them that have been awesome. So people can check that out at knotfest.com. I rebooted my YouTube channel because for almost a year I was posting like an interview a month. I really took a step back because of how much these other projects were growing. So on there now I've been doing a lot of fun stuff like Q&As. I've been doing music reviews reviewing movies which is a whole that. new passion oh whole new passion of mine man that has been so so much fun so i've picked that up um the worsties we have some new plans going into you know the next few months so just lots of different avenues lots of different ways to be creative i started doing blog posts and posting like poems and my lyricism on my website now which is something i never would have done before but i think it's just to the point where i'd rather be vulnerable and fully myself now no bullshit no hiding um and you know those who want to embrace it will embrace it I love it. And uh, you had mentioned the worsties. I mean, that I would imagine that's changed a lot of the ways that, that you do things, just having that platform and having that source of revenue and, and all that. I mean, I, I've talked to so many women in wrestling that are like, well, I'm not going to go sign with WWE because I can't do this anymore. And there's a lot of different avenues for this in addition to YouTube, in addition to you hosting stuff, in addition to other freelance stuff that you have coming your way. How has that changed things for you? So for a while, her and I were focusing, and her being Selena De Laurenta, aka Natalia Class, but we were really focusing on our exclusive pages. And then I think it got to the point where we were pumping out tons of content and these photo shoots, and we were seeing the revenue come in. And it was great when it came to it being on the books but then we spiritually and this is gonna sound so hippy dippy but whatever we spiritually grown and changed so much since then that our mindset isn't really in that place anymore so we were like you know what we're gonna throw on our business suits and find other ways to really continue to make coin with this project and we have a couple of things coming up that we're excited to work on and show everybody and you know it's um it's just fun being able to chill with one of your best friends and do dumb shit for a living <laughs> so. i love it it's it's great it's great yeah. So I, I would imagine you're still interested in staying involved with pro wrestling. Absolutely. It's been a love of mine since I was a kid. I always say like music will forever be my number one just because I couldn't imagine being in a world of silence ever. But wrestling's always been there too since I was two or three years old. So I'd love to continue doing something. I'm definitely putting out some some little uh, birdies here and there and seeing what can happen and where I'll end up because, you know, as the modern English song goes, the future's open wide and I'm, I'm very curious to see what opportunities can land in my lap or which ones I'll chase and, you know, yeah. get get approved. You never know how it goes. One of the great things about your content is how versatile it is. And people will always say, oh, how do I get involved in this, this, this? And I'm like, well, first, you got to create the content. And two, you need to show people you're as versatile as possible, because if you have the ability to do anything, they can trust you with a variety of things. Then when an opportunity opens up for something else, they can say, oh, they're the right person for that. They're the right person for that. They're the right person for that. And that kind of happened in MLW. Like you became a performer. <laughs> But yeah. like, like, which I mean, if you're an interviewer there, you're a bit of a performer anyway, but it was a performer in a way different situation. I know oh, yeah. you, you had been pushing for that for quite a while, hadn't you? A long time. I had a lot of calls with, with court saying, Hey, the interviewing, I'm grateful that I get to do this and that you've given me this creative freedom, but I know I can do more than just kind of hold the microphone and give a couple of super witty, ridiculous remarks <laughs> back. And I think that sunk in for a couple months with him. And then when the opportunity to take stuff with Richard further within the brand uh, came to be, it just made sense to pair us together. And at first I was shaking. I'm like, Oh man, it was like a whole other level of acting and committing and playing to camera angles. And it's not just me 
on the line, it's also his career and his work. And it was fun getting into that role. It was completely different because I always say the the interviewing is really just me. Meanwhile, this was me cranked to 11. Like we had to spinal tap this shit to a whole <laughs> other level. And it was a blast. I loved it. We had so much fun. And it was cool being able to show people that I can do more. I can talk on the microphone. I can act. And I can really uh, just, just play up this whole other literal 180 version of who I am really loved what you all were doing i hated you know Thank obviously you. You, you hate in general that something like what happens happened with richard but man i loved what you guys were doing and again you guys were my, my favorite interview that i did all last year because like th there are some it was people, fun <laughs> there were some people i won't interview in character but when it's mjf richard holiday silas young's a good one because he's the last real man matt hardy there are some people where i'm like Okay, Dominic Mysterio, where I'm like, okay, the content that I'm going to get in character will be just as good as whatever it is I would get normally. And I can ask these pers these people out of character anytime these questions. So I, I needed to capture that in the moment. Did you have anybody that you interviewed that like broke you, like that, that cracked oh. you up and you had to do a retake or anything like that? I mean, you definitely got us in that interview. I was trying so hard to keep it together. So well done, because that doesn't happen quite frequently. Um, but definitely in the past, especially when it does come to the kayfabe interviews or just people kind of, you know, doing their thing in character. When I got to do all my work with Scarlett Bordeaux back in Impact and have her on my site, we had all these like inside jokes and things we wanted to keep up. And it was so hard keeping a straight face, hearing her bash me so much because off camera, we were super cool, especially within that time in Impact. So for me, that was always super fun. Um, and then there were just a lot of other things. Like when I first started off super early, I remember interviewing Rosemary and that was terrifying for me because I was so fresh to the industry. I did not know how to do in-person interviews or in character interviews rather. And I remember just her actually like getting under my skin. She was so good at sticking to that role. So those are just a couple that come to mind. But in terms of breaking fully, I really think it's only been you, which I mean, kudos, oh man, because it doesn't happen. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I, I never did in-person interviews really before, like the, I think it was the second Starcast, And okay. I saw, I saw Mance Warner and I was like, I want to interview him because he'll just oh, interview, great. he'll just interview himself for two or three minutes <laughs> and it'll sort of ease me into that. How was it for you when you first started to interview people in person? Was it just like a natural thing or was it something you had to sort of ease into. Yeah, so I started off doing phoners and then emailers, and that's when I was in high school. And it's a totally different world it when is. you start doing these in person because then you can actually play off of their mannerisms. You can see their facial expressions change, their their bodies, and it's just it's a whole other beast. And I love it. It made it so much easier for me actually because I feel like being very much an empath, like you can see exactly where people are going or what they're thinking, yeah. and you can almost do like the little things where you can like you know nudge them a little bit or actually physically play in a sense and it just ups everything in terms of the interaction the friendships and uh, just just the content overall so as much as i've been doing a lot more zoom interviews now it's been reversed really since the pandemic especially with the not fest work and, and the wrestling interviews um i love the in-person stuff no, yeah. nothing comes close to it nothing it's, does it's such a it's a different kind of interview for me in person as well and uh, i think that i think that having a balance is nice but I just always love the way that you you did your in person stuff because it, it always worked so so well. So you, you in ML you and MLW have this call. I assume it ended amicably. What yes. did you expect going into this call? Ooh, I, I to be very blunt, I expected my release and I expected that respect back from them that's what i was hoping at least because you hear a lot of people leaving whichever company it might be within wrestling and it cannot go well and lawsuits are involved and there's a lot of animosity and i didn't want that because i was grateful for my time there i know that the situation was completely out of everyone's hands yeah. and they even tried giving me something earlier in the year where i was doing stuff for um, pwtv i had that little insider show where i was still you know repping the brand and then that eventually kind of made it, its way out too so I think they realized that I had a lot to bring to the table and I was just stuck not being able to you know put the meal down <laughs> and I wanted to be able to do that so um 
yeah, I wanted I wanted my release going into that call and I'm very grateful they gave it. And I'm just happy to have left on good terms because they they gave me a lot of really cool opportunity and ways to be creative over the years. Now, we saw you do uh, some stuff with AEW early on. We saw you do stuff with Impact. Yeah. Do you maintain relationships with either of those companies or, or I'm sure people involved because you've interviewed so many people uh, associated regardless, but... Uh, what what do you view your relationship like with either of those companies? Right. So at this point, I'm very, very close with a lot of people in both of those locker rooms from people who have just been signed to ones who have been there from the very start or like the main eventers of the of the brands. So for me, my, my eyes since I started have been set on AEW. And I think it's one of those things where I know we've discussed that before and how some things just can fall through the cracks sometimes or other opportunities come up and timing just isn't right. And I'm almost glad that when I first was doing those shows for freelance and Cody brought me on back then, I'm almost glad that that the deal didn't go through where we didn't continue talking about that in that moment because I feel like I have so much more to bring now. It's like back then it would have just been me as an interviewer. Now they can bring me with any wrestler. I know that I can manage the hell out of somebody and we would have, oh, the craziest run, whether they want me a uh, heel baby, whatever it is. I just have a lot more to bring and my confidence is so much higher since doing the cloud couple stuff. So, you know, that that's where my eyes are set, but I'm super open to hearing from whomever because that's kind of the beauty of being a free agent. You never know who's gonna come knocking. And uh, obviously, WWE is out there. Is that yeah. have, you ever, have you ever had conversations with them, or, or talks, or, or maybe any any discussions about possibly doing that? Yeah. So there haven't been any discussions i know their big thing a lot of the time is there is a page you can send stuff to but a lot of it is just them reaching out to you like i think every female i know has gotten a gig there it's either because like a buddy's in there already or simply they approached them so that one's a little more fickle however completely not out of the question because i feel like people are crazy when they say no i never like to work there even if it's a short stint it, it's the pinnacle of it all it's wwe so yeah. for me that would be so cool my my main thing however is just not wanting to go into robot mode wherever i end up i would love for them to hire me for me so i can actually bring something to the company and again just not be in that robotic stance of delivering whatever lines they want like i love the banter i love the ping pong that interaction and i know that's that's kind of what we crave as interviewers doing that kind of stuff so definitely uh my my eyes are on it. I just have to figure out maybe do I do I finally send that email and reach out? I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, and and we have seen more of that. Like since they brought brought back Kathy, we see more of what she can provide. Because I right. remember when Dasha did her her interview with Chris Van Vliet, and he was like, I think a lot of people will be surprised that you're not a robot. And we saw <laughs> this personality from her, and now we we see that when she does AEW stuff as well. Yeah, because to me the interviewers are their performers as well that you they need to you need to be able to empathize with them as well like when a heel heals on them or when a baby face takes up for them you got to have a reason to care and if they've been a robot the whole time i'm going to be like well i don't care what happens with this like, robot why am i invested <laughs> the robot doesn't have feelings so why do i care about yes. this so uh, I, what what else are you looking forward to in, in life, in, in the world in general? Because you always have a ton going on. Yeah, honestly, just doing things that are bringing me happiness, which has really been my MO for the last, let's say, eight months to, to 12 months. Like the last year, that's been my focus, whether it's personal stuff, the people mm -hmm. that I bring into my life, who I'm hanging out with, the work that I'm doing. I just want to be at peace and be happy because there was a amount of time years ago where I didn't have certain right people in my life and I wasn't doing jobs that I absolutely loved. And if you can feel it weighing on you, you know, and I feel like in this lifetime, this is the only one we got right now. And I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to to leave this place in the happiest mindset and, and make sure everyone around me is good, too. So it's cheesy as hell. But that that's literally it. And I want to just continue, you know, thriving and making my name even bigger and, and getting that last name out there more, because that was always a huge pride thing for me. And I feel like I'm just at the cusp of, of starting that which is crazy you know but there's a lot more to do so it's just a matter of seeing what opportunities come which ones I decide to chase and you know hopefully continuing to have this ridiculous uh, little smirk on my face and <laughs> indeed uh, you're interviewing rock stars all the time I always wonder like yeah. do, you ever, do you ever deal with egos like does anybody say oh I don't know maybe they say I get off the stage right drop the mic walk up to these hot chicks and I'm all like Sup, no, ladies. Stop. 
My name's Slim Shady. I'm the lead singer of D12, baby. I can't with you. You had to sneak it in, didn't you? You just had to. I'm gonna educate you guys on D12. It was very underrated. It really was. Oh, well, what's what's funny is they had that pill song, right? Um, Purple pills, yeah. Purple pills. And so, so after that interview, I did educate myself. And I remember it was my dad who was like, he watched that clip and you had him dying. The fact that you were able to break us. And I listened to that song. I was like, shit, I did hear this growing up. Like, this is a little bop. I remember this tune. <laughs> the one, literally the one that I uh, quoted to you guys played on my Bluetooth speaker when I was in the shower this morning. And I was like, ah, oh, Did it really? I was like, yeah, oh, I was like, oh, it's perfect. Kismet energy. <laughs> if, if I go backwards on my phone, three, four, five songs. Yeah, there it is. That's right. Wow. There. Oh, that makes me happy. It was like the universe said, hey, we're getting you ready for today. Let's be nostalgic. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, tell the people where they can find you, where they can follow you, where they can support yes. you. You've got you've got so many platforms. <laughs> and I, Man, I love I'm it. all over the place. Thank you. Yeah, so for all of it, just hit up aliciatoot.com or search Alicia Toot in the Google bot. That's where you will find everything. All of my projects, all of my merch, all my upcoming appearances. I do a lot of signings. And ever since announcing the free agent thing 24 hours back or less than that. I've had a lot of people reach out to do signings, which is super exciting. So yeah, just hit up aliciatoot.com and you'll find my ramblings and everything else in between along with the interviews. There's just a ton going on. And I feel like this is the start of a very cool new chapter. I'm, I'm pretty hyped. I can't remember who, who pitched the name, but I saw somebody say like maybe a year or two ago that you should do a show called Oot and a Boot with Alicia Toot. <laughs> I thought I was like, that's, that's brilliant. Whoa. I need to, because I've been doing my vlogs, right? And I want to start yeah. doing more and more of them. And I have a, a trip coming up, two trips next month. So I think we might have to make this a thing now. I appreciate I, you bringing this up to me again. I, heard, I saw it and I was like, oh my oh, God. Like, that is such it's a brilliant too good. name. It's, it's yeah. perfect. It's Ooh, perfect. <laughs> with Alicia, too. It's amazing. And, We're making this a thing. And, well, but here's the thing. I was going to say, oh, and you'll have less people be confused about how to pronounce your last name. But no, you, you will definitely have some people go out and about with Alicia Tout. And, oh, and yeah, they'll that's screw so it up. true. But yeah, whatever. I'm used to it at this point. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> Guys, uh, check her out. All of her details are in the description below. Alicia Tout, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, as always. Until next time, guys, we're out. NordVPN.com slash Fightful makes my browsing experience better. Way better than yours if you don't use it. Why? Because I can block online trackers. I can block annoying pop-up ads and malware. I can browse safely, securely, wherever I am, even if I'm right here on all my devices. This laptop, actually this is a desktop, what, what am I saying? But this laptop right here, this phone right here, that router over there, the TV over there, all with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can also save on pay-per-views. Maybe you want to check out AEW without commercials. Maybe you miss the old WWE Network. Maybe you want to buy a big UFC pay-per-view with an overseas service at a much more affordable rate. NordVPN.com slash Fightful not only has you covered, but when you get one of their plans, you're effectively going to save yourself money. And I'm going to save you some more. Four months free on top of that deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash Fightful.